G'day and welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. Today I'm showing you the mathematical strategy game NIM. It's a game that can be played with matchsticks or any counters, and the aim of the game is not to be left with the last matchstick. It's a great little game, and I'm going to first off show you how to play this game, and then I'm going to show you the strategy that you can use so you never lose this game, and it will drive your friends nuts. But before I do that, this is a sponsored video, and there's a message about my sponsor, Skillshare. So before we start, this video is a sponsored video from the online learning community, Skillshare. That's these guys right here. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of awesome classes for creative people, people just like you. They have lots of classes with topics ranging from web development and design right through to marketing. But my favorite right now I'm checking out is Steve McDonald's pottery classes right here. The classes on Skillshare are made for learning, meaning that there are no ads, so you can stay focused on what you're doing, and because they're constantly releasing new classes, you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. I'll put a link for Skillshare in the video description below, and the great thing is the first 1,000 people to use this link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. That is two months free, so you can check it out and see where your learning journey might take you. So back to the game of NIM. So the setup for this game is as follows. We have four rows, and in the first row, we have one matchstick. In the second row, we have three matchsticks. In the third row, we have five matchsticks. And in the fourth row, we have seven matchsticks. So it's set up as you can see there. The game is played with two players taking turns, where each turn consists of taking any number of matchsticks from a single row. Once again, the aim not to be left holding the very last matchstick. So playing this game, we could have a look as follows. So first off, what happens is player one goes through and could take any other matchsticks from any row, and they decide, for example, let's take three matchsticks from row four. Okay, so player two is now going to have their turn, so they can take any number of matchsticks from any row, and they decide to take two matchsticks from the second row, and so on and so forth, as you can see. This person takes three, this person takes two, this person takes one, this person takes one, this person takes two, this person takes one, and then the loser is eventually left with that single matchstick. So this video is not just about telling you how to play the game of NIM, but it's also gonna be talking about the mathematical strategy behind always winning the game of NIM. And in case you're playing this game by yourself, there is an online version of this game that I'm gonna put in the link, and interestingly enough, this game, not the one I'm linking to, of course, but the game of NIM was one of the first computer games ever built. In 1940, the Nimrod machine was displayed at the New York World Fair, and apparently only a few people could beat it. So, how can you play this game and win every single time? Well, the winning strategy, as you'd expect, involves a little bit of maths, and I think the best way is to probably show you. So, we're gonna start a game, as you can see, here, we have one, three, five, and seven matchsticks. Now the secret behind the strategy of playing this game involves looking at ways for each row that we can make the numbers using four, two, and one through addition, okay? Pretty easy to remember because double of one is two and double of two is four. So now we look at the first row, we have one match here. This can be made up of just one. In this row, in the second row, we have three matches. This is made up of two plus one. In the third row, we have five matches. This is made up of four plus one. And in the fourth row, we have seven matches. This is made up of four, two, and one. And now the trick of how you actually play this game is pretty simple. The next thing what you're going to do is you are going to pair these up. And obviously, once again, in your head. But it's not too bad to do. So we have a one and a one. We have a one and a one. We have a two and a two here. And we have a four and a four. And as you see, these all pair up and nothing's left over, this is said to have a NIM sum that's equal to zero. And this is what you want to be leaving your opponent. You want to be leaving them this NIM sum of zero. So this is all paired up. So always leave your opponent with this, except at the very end as you'll see, and you'll win. So what about I show you by playing this game through? So let's continue this game. Obviously for the first move, there is no way that you can leave a NIM sum of zero because you're starting with a NIM sum of zero. So you're going to a state of non-equilibrium, I guess you could think, and that's why you don't want to be starting. Your opponent, not knowing this, however, goes first and takes two matches from the fourth row. So it leaves one match, three match, five matches, and five matches. So now we can go through and do the grouping so we can work out what to leave our opponent. We have a one, we have three matches here, which is made up of two and one. 
We have five matches here. That's made up of four and one. Five matches is made up of four and one. So you can pretty easily see which one you're going to be getting rid of. This one here pairs. These guys here pair. These guys here pair. <laughs> We've got this two here. So we want to be leaving a nim sum of zero. We want everything to be paired up. The easiest way is we're going to get rid of two matches. So let's go through and do that. And this is what you would be leaving your opponent. So let's just see what they do now. So your opponent's going to now just do whatever they do, but you're in the winning position at the moment. No matter what they do, you can counter with a move to put them back in a nim sum of zero. So what they do is they go through and take three matches from this third row. Okay, we have three matches from the third row. So now we have one, one, two, and five. Let's just write that down. We have one, one, two, and four plus one. Cool, right? So now let's work out what match to take. We have one and one here, and what we have here is a two, a four, and a one. Now, how can we go through and make these numbers here so they're going to match up with this two? Well, if we take three from this entire row here, what we're going to end up with is five. Take three, we're going to end up with two matches, and then these guys will pair up, and we'll end up with a nim sum of zero. So we would take three matches off. Let's do that. And you can see now what we've got left. This is what we have. We have a one, a one, a two, and a two. That's made up of two there. Now these guys would pair up. Everything's happy in the world. We've left them a nim sum of zero. So now it's their turn. Okay, now your opponent at this stage, usually it's fun to watch them. They're trying to scratch their head and work out what they're gonna do. They're kind of thinking they're still in the game. You haven't told them they've lost from the very first move and don't let them know, all right? So what they're gonna do is they're just gonna do some move and let's face it, we know it's not going to matter. Let's say they take one match from row one. All right, what have we got now? We have one match here, two here, two here. We can easily see the ones that are pairing up. And this is a bit of a thing. Quite often if you have this symmetrical idea, two and two, you know these guys are gonna pair up. So you just follow their move along. So how do we now reach a nim sum of zero? We're going to take one off that. So one off that second row. We do that, what we end up with is this here. Two matches and two matches. So it's left a nim sum of zero. Now it's their turn again. Now, usually at this stage, they're still trying to figure out what they're gonna do. Once again, doesn't really matter. Still fun to watch, doesn't matter. But what they do is say they take one match away and it's this one here. Now, obviously what we're gonna be left with is two matches here and one match here. Now watch out for this, because you might think, okay, well what we'll do is we can take off one match here, and what we're gonna be left with is we are going to end up, you know, with a nim sum of zero and everything's good. At this stage, what you do is you have to abandon leaving this nim sum. Funnily enough, what they've left you is a nim sum of zero at this stage, but it doesn't matter because the game's almost over. What's the object of the game? It's to leave them with one match. So at this stage, you don't want to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory by making some silly move, like taking one match away. That's not what we want to be doing. We just take both matches away. And when we do that, we're going to leave them with this last match here, and that means they're going to lose the game. So that's how you go about winning the game of Nim. All right, now look, if you really want to try it out, try it out on a friend. I recommend go through a few rough games in your head first. But as I said earlier in the description below, I will leave a link on how to find one of these games online. Anyway, that's how you play the wonderful game of Nim. Before I knew this particular strategy, I had a Bangladeshi guy show me how to play this I used to work with and he used to beat me every time and he drove me up the wall. And the funny thing is once I kind of worked it out, what I do is I do the same to my students. They still get the idea they can win. You tell them you'll give them an A or something like that. If they are, can just beat you at one game. It drives them up the wall. Anyway, once again, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I really recommend having a look at them and see what you can discover. The link is in the description. A big shout out to my patrons and all you wonderful subscribers. We're almost at a million, right? I hope you like this video. Take care. Bye.